In this video I'm going to be making a one pound or three quarter inch ID black powder skyrocket or ballistic missile or a couple of things actually. Now firstly the term one pound rocket. Um, a one pound rocket, the, the regular size of that listed on all of the, the pyro tables on the various sides, um, various websites out there, is a, a three quarter inch ID tube by seven and a half inches long. Um, the one pound bit comes in from what I've read is that if you were to fill the tube up with three quarter inch lead balls, the weight of those balls in a seven and a half inch tube would be one pound. So that's where the one pound rocket comes from. The tubes I'm going to be using are going to be roughly around half that length. They're a four inch or 100 millimeter tube and three quarter inch or 19 millimeter inside diameter. Um, I'm going to be using some tooling that I've made. Um, these are core burner rockets, so they're going to have a hollow core of black powder that increases the surface area that burns when they ignite. Um, so I've also got a hollow rammer and a solid rammer. You'll notice the rammers have got a, a series of marks and, and also they've got an O-ring on there. Um, what that does is when I'm actually doing the, the ramming, I can tell where the bottom of the tube is and as I ram it, watching the o-ring going up uh, I can see how thick the throat of the nozzle is going to be. I do have that marked out for, for a, a certain length and I've also got that if I want to do a, a bit of a custom length with it. The other marks on there is the, the mid mark there that is when the hollow rammer is clearing the spindle. Once I've got the black powder pressed in there to that height I'll then swap over to a solid rammer which I've also got some markings marked on there, which is for one, basically one tube diameter or, or 19 mil of fuel above the core, uh, one and a half tube diameters or two tube diameters above the core for the fuel. Uh, use that for various flight lengths and for, for different bits and pieces. Um, then we've also got all the other bits we'll need, some fuse, some sticks, uh, funnels, spoons, bits and pieces. Um, uh, let's get in and, and press up a motor now. First off we're going to press the nozzle, so we'll put the tube onto the tool, going to put the o-ring down there and just set that in place that'll tell me where the, the top of the, the tube is and I'll be able to tell how long the nozzle is when I start pressing. So first up we're going to put the nozzle mix in, and roughly for a slightly heat teaspoon of nozzle mix in there, tap that down, insert the, the hollow rammer, give him a bit of a, a press down, having a look at that there we've got about a, a quarter inch length of the throat of the nozzle, probably want another couple of mil on that just to make sure it's nice and strong and stays in there. I just drop in about a, another quarter of a teaspoon of the nozzle mix. Push the o-ring back down again. Give him a, another press. I don't know where the o-ring is, that'll give us probably about 8 mil of nozzle, which is roughly where I want it. I've had a bit of a Bit of a tap out. The next step is to get some fuel in there. Probably about three quarters of a heat teaspoon of fuel. I'm trying roughly to press increments about the the same length as what the diameter of the tube is. Uh, just gets it compacted really easily and really nicely. Just a bit quick press, pop the hollow rammer out, just give him a bit of a tap to get any excess fuel out of the, the hollow. Next increment of fuel goes in, pull the o-ring back, that just seals up the tube and stops it blowing any black powder back out past and keeps things a little bit cleaner, so give that increment a bit of a press. 
once again give it a little bit of a, a tap out spoon in about the same amount of fuel again got some marks on the rammer which tell me when the, the rammer gets to the stage of being above the, the, the spindle in the tube which at that stage I'll start using a, a solid rammer getting up a little bit closer to that now probably after the next lot of fuel we'll swap over to the, the, the solid rammer You see by the mark we're getting pretty close by the time this presses down it'll probably be about level with the top of the, the spindle. This stage we'll swap over to the solid rammer. Probably only be two increments of fuel with the solid rammer and the motor will be up to where I want it. Once again got an o-ring on there just to stop the the powder blowing back out past keeps things a little bit tidier give that a press Take the o-ring back down a little increment of fuel in there and we're getting pretty close to where I want it to, to be That's about there, we'll just tap out any, any loose fuel, put the fuel aside, Give a little bit of a, a wipe off, and then we're ready to remove him off the spindle, we'll just give him a bit of a bit of a twist and pop him off, there'll be a little bit of loose nozzle mix in there, but no black powder's dropping out, it's pressed pretty firm, it's not, not going anywhere. If you have a look at the nozzle, it's got a bit of a shiny look to it. We've pressed it pretty hard and the wax in there makes it look like crockery or fired, fired clay, nice and shiny, you know, it's nice and hard. I'm just going to pop that back on the spindle for a sec and put in about a quarter of a teaspoon of nozzle mix. I want to put about a uh, one and a half, two millimetre clay bulkhead in there. later drill a little pass fire hole in so I can put a charge above the, above the fuel level of the motor. See by there we've got that put in, pop the motor off again and there we have the, the finished rocket motor. Now we've got the rocket motors pressed up the, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put a, a header into the one that I'm going to make into a more traditional sky rocket. This doesn't have a clay bulkhead in it, it's just the fuel pressed in uh, roughly one and a half tube diameters above the top of the spindle so it'll have a, a bit of burn time after it goes to um, uh, before the, the flash header goes off. So for this one I'm going to put a couple of scoops of uh, perk flash in there, so probably two of those. I'm also going to add to that some nitrate flash that's been made with some relatively coarse uh, magnalium powder, roughly around um, 70 mesh through to 325 mesh, so there's some fine stuff and there's some bits in there. This is made with barium nitrate and I've also put uh, about 5% PVC powder in there. Um, what that'll do is I'll put perk flash gives it a, a, a nice old kick and a bang and uh, gets things started pretty well and then as the nitrate flash uh, takes over it, it throws out some nice sparks with the magnolium sometimes I can put a bit of uh, titanium in there but the other thing with this is it gives it a bit of a green flash which in the dead of night it looks looks quite good. On top of the flash I'm just going to poke in uh, a little bit of a, a normal tissue in there and that's just to put a bit of a barrier in between the, the, the flash and the hot melt glue. Um, I find that works a, a, a little bit better. Um, you, you get a lot of air bubbles coming out of the flash if you just dump the hot melt on top of it and I don't like doing that because this gun gets pretty warm. 
don't like taking any chances so I'll fill that up to it's probably just over level with the top of the the tube just pop, pop pointing out a little bit just let him sit there and work work a couple of the air bubbles out of there there's always the odd, odd air bubble in there once the air bubbles gone and that settled down a little bit uh, the next thing I'll do is just uh, tip him upside down and press him hard on a bit of um, bit of baking paper and I'll leave him up there to to set that's going to give me a nice flat top on it while we're doing that I'll go on to starting off with the ballistic missile when I do it, these ones I like to get the fuse in first um, makes it a little bit easier later on so I've bent up a little bit of a hook on the end of the visco and I push that in until I can f feel it in contact with the, the fuel um, you can actually feel uh, where, the, where the nozzle is and where the fuel starts the, the, the nozzle being very hard pressed and, and shiny is actually quite, quite slippery um, and you can feel it just get a little bit grainy as the, 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 the visco goes up and comes into contact with the fuel grain. You can also tell it's been in contact with the, the fuel grain because it's uh, just brushed a little bit of it off. Um, so with the ballistic missile, um, that's got the fuse in. I like a nice long fuse on those. Now with the ballistic missile, we're going to have fins on it rather than a stick. So I've got a, a couple of oversized uh, pop sticks. What I'll do with those, I'm not going to measure it up. I'm just going to roughly, roughly get them squared up and then roughly cut them in half with a, about a 45 diagonal on them. I'll stack them all up together and I've got, I'm sure you've got them fairly close. Uh, but still, just want to stick the two longer ones together. Probably missed by about a, a millimetre. So what I'll do with that, now that I've got them all bunched together. So I'll just trim that millimetre off and I've got them all the same length. The uh, next thing I'm going to do, roughly about halfway along the, the, the length of them, get the top top edge lined up about halfway along there just, just put a little bit of a, a cut in them you can actually see the cut as a mark from the side and that's going to help me line them up I'm sure I did that on the wrong side so now I'll do it on the other side just get them all lined up roughly halfway put a notch in them and that's just going to help us um, when we, we come to, to line up the, the fins when we, we're gluing them onto the, the, the body. So we'll start off on that. Fuse is in there nice and tight now. That's not going anywhere. The next, the next part is to start putting the fins on. So from where I've cut that notch along to the top a little put a great deal of hot glue and just where that I've cut that notch to there holding there make sure it's parallel with both edges of the tube and it's sticking up at 90 degrees that way that's the first first fin on and in position Again, don't put a, a whole heap. This only just got to hold it in in position for a little while. So the other one, just make sure you got 180 degrees round on the tube. You can visually line it up pretty well. So that's the second one in place. Third one in. I 
you want them evenly spaced around the body and I want a nice nice straight line and just a, at this stage just a, the minimum of hot glue to hold them in place That's sort of uh, how you want it. You can see from that end, I've got them relatively well spaced, and the main thing is that they're all parallel with the sides of the tube, so they're not skewing off and spinning the rocket off into a any any different direction once they're all glued in place. Your rocket should stand up. The next thing I'll do, you have to wait for this to, to dry up for a couple of hours is just put a a bead of a, a wood glue down there because what will happen is when they launch the uh, the rocket body will get quite hot and it will melt the hot glue and your fins will fall off and your rocket spins off in odd directions um, sometimes they do sometimes they don't but I just like to put a bit of, a bit of wood glue on there and that's probably the this one, probably the basis of a what I call a ballistic missile. Um, there's a bit more finish to do with that. That's sitting pretty good. You'll also find that'll that'll stand up um, to finish those off properly. Um, you can put a bit of a bit of a nose cone on them. You've got all four fins sitting there. If you get one fin longer than another, you can trim them. But as you can see by that, that'll sit in its launch position. No, no problems at all. These fly quite well. Haven't got around to doing them with a, a heady yet, um, but they, they will carry one. So the next thing we'll do now is just a conventional stick rocket, how to finish that off. That's uh, fairly straightforward. Um, the hot glue's melted. As you can see, it's got a nice, nice flat top on it just trim off anything any excess that's hanging over um, putting sticks on these is fairly straightforward just put a bead of hot glue about an inch and a half long and just put the stick on so it's parallel to the edges of the tube you can just by eye, see that the, whether the stick's nice and straight or not. These sticks are a little bit wonky, but you can twist and bend them into straight once you've got them all glued on. So with these, once again, the hot glue is only there just to to hold it in place. Um, once again, if they get uh, get warm in flight, the stick will fall off. So you need something to to hold them in. Um, I did do some rockets where all the sticks I purposely only very lightly glued on with hot glue and that uh, produced the interesting effect is that the rocket would get uh, halfway up, the stick would fall off and the rocket would take off spinning around in all directions and with a, a very sparky tail that actually looked quite good. Uh, the last thing with the stick rocket is once again I've, I've put a hook on the end of the fuse push that down into the core until it makes contact. The other thing with these is I do those fairly close to the the, the stick and then I can just put a, a blob of hot melt glue on the stick and just put that down there uh, so that the, the fuse sticks to the, the stick. That way if it becomes dislodged out of the core or it can't become dislodged out of the core because it's being held there so that way if you've got a few of them in a box or a, a heap of them um, they're not going to lose their fuses before you get to use them just get that dry so we've got a, a ballistic missile and we've got a conventional sky rocket um, I had a few issues getting the um, the pressing part of it 
lined up with my camera positions. I hope you, you could see everything when I was pressing the, the motors up. Um, the upside for me is with having to do a number of takes is I now have a few toys to play with. Um, not sure if I'll get any of these launched this afternoon. It's uh, a little bit windy outside and rockets generally don't like too much wind, but I will uh, upload some, some launch and flight photos, especially of the little ballistic missile once I get those done. Uh, but that's the way I make uh, one pound or three quarter inch diameter black powder rockets.